Aloha. Aloha. Welcome, everybody, to our 10 a.m. worship service in person and uh, via Zoom. Glad to have you with us. I am uh, Pastor Keith Walter, and I'm back. And yes, I, I, I got back. Don't ask me how, but I got back. It was, wasn't too bad, but not the route I started out. Oh, well. I want to just say real briefly uh, here at the start of the service, thank you for your kind words, your email cards, the hugs. Uh, uh, it was, I, felt, I felt the love even from far away. So I appreciate that very much, and my family did too. So um, let's see if I remember how to do all this. I think I'll be OK. We are going to begin today with confession and forgiveness as a preparation for worship, and so I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We pause for a moment of reflection. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing... The gathering song, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we begin our worship, we cry for God to have mercy on us in Christ. mercy on us and renews us with God's saving power. In response, we sing glory be to God in heaven. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. I am the first, and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. 
Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what it is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid, for have I not told you from old undeclared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please say Psalm 86 responsibly with me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O my Lord, with all my heart. And glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you be put to death, the deeds of the body, for you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present time, sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For those for who hope for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it patiently. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Matthew. The parable of the wheat and darnel. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. 
So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I think I'm going to just stay up here because I got a couple people, I got some moving parts. All right. Uh, again, thank you for all the kind words and uh, cards and emails and, uh, and the hugs that you uh, uh, sent along uh, to me and to my family with uh, the passing of my sister Paula. She uh, died from complications of what is called trotter willy syndrome and uh, specifically uh, respiratory failure and a heart attack. This was a hard sermon to put together. I'll, I'll admit that. And I spent a lot of time reading through the scripture readings for today, and they're not going to spend a lot of time with them specifically, but they're in the back of my mind as I talk about my sister Paula. That first one from Isaiah where it goes back to the first commandment, you shall have no gods, small g, you shall have no gods. Who's like me anyways? And then Paul, which is very complicated. They just, he threw so much in there. But he's talking about the redemption of the whole creation through the sufferings of Christ and Christ's followers who are adopted, who are fathered. And it's not father, it's daddy. That word Abba is not just a Swedish rock band from the 70s. You had to be ready for that. Wait, okay. It is daddy. Daddy, who hugs you, holds you, who's intimate and caring for you. And the redemption of our bodies and all of this good creation. And then Jesus, I, I call it the parable of the wheat and the darnel, because darnel was a kind of weed that looked like wheat. And what's Jesus saying there in the story? But the kingdom of heaven is coming at us but quit trying to sort everything out. That'll happen later. Hang in there. Wait for it. So yeah, this is the first sermon after my sister Paula's death. And two friends on the mainland in two very different places, two very different time zones, about the same time late afternoon, sent me a text message saying, how's your sermon going? 
I said, well, I'm working on it. It's not easy. And both of them replied and said, we thought that might be the case. And then they both, and I, they don't know each other. And if they do, they're not owning up to it. I'll tell you that. They both said, Keith, speak from the heart and speak with love. I thought that just sort of broke it open a little bit for me, and that felt good. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Paula. Do any of you remember when she came here five or six years ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, she was born in 1964 in Canton, Ohio. And for the first six weeks of her life, I didn't get to meet her. Because as soon as she was born, they knew something wasn't right. Something was wrong. And they whisked her off a couple, an hour or so down the road to the, the prestigious Cleveland Clinic. And I'm not sure, but I think they had to use a feeding tube to get her nourishment from the get-go. Because with prodder willi syndrome, there's a lot of complications, but one of them was she could not nurse. She could not suck because she had what was called floppiness, where the muscles are not well developed at all. And when she moved her arms, they flopped. When she tried to cry, I, I hadn't thought about it, but when you, try, when you cry, it requires some muscles. You have to work those muscles. She couldn't cry. She squeaked, just like I did there unintentionally, squeaked. And, uh, well, she couldn't move, she couldn't cry, she could not suck, and she could not walk for the longest time. It takes a few years for the floppiness to go away. But my sister and I thought it was really kind of cute and funny because she, she would just sort of scoot across the floor on her butt and pull herself with her legs. And she managed to get into enough trouble as it was doing that, so okay. They didn't know much about prodder willi syndrome. They, 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 they put it together in the mid-late 50s, Prodder and Willie, and, um, but we didn't hear about much about it at all until she was diagnosed about the age of 13 or 14. So the symptoms include, like I said, the, the floppiness in early age, but the big one is in ages two to six, the part of the brain that says you're full, stop eating, doesn't work. Stops working. It's, it's a, a, a genetic defect. And um, it's kind of, I'm not even going to go into it, but it was a genetic condition. And you're going to eat and eat and eat. And she did. So she got big. And I thought I'd thrown all the big pictures away when my parents passed 10, 10 12 years ago. But my sister and brother-in-law found one where she's sitting on a horse, and she's four foot nine and 450 pounds, morbidly obese. And I remember, I think, I think I was in Montana in my first parish when my sisters called, my other two sisters, and said, she's out of control. And they won't listen to us because my parents were firm believers in the Ike and Mamie Eisenhower model of the nuclear family, as I call it. And they would listen to the boy, but not the girls, right? So my sisters would call me up and say, we you need you to tell mom and dad this. We had an agreement that I'd tell them only what my smart sis really smart sisters knew. So I got on the plane and said, she's out of control. She went to a prodder Willie Institute in Pittsburgh for a few months. She got small, from 450 to 115. Not, not all in one week. It only took two weeks. No, it took a long time. She flew into rages. That was another symptom of prodder willi She flew into rages when she got back home. She got big again. Big brother went back again. 
she went to the group home for people living with prader willi syndrome. They had staffing 24-7. They pat and this part, this part is the part that I always found uh, interesting. They padlocked the kitchen door. They put a door up on the kitchen and they padlocked it. They padlocked the fridge. They padlocked all the cupboards. It was not, this eating disorder was biological. It was not like uh, bulimia or anorexia where you can get counseling and, and maybe uh, work at it. You just simply have to lock everything. She was smart. Intellectual disability, but she was still smart. So the taxi would pick her up to take her to Arc North of Columbus, where she worked. And we we're saying, why, why can't, why can't she lose weight? Come to find out, as soon as she got in the car, she said to the taxi driver, "Let's go through the McDonald's drive-through." And then she'd eat it real fast, and then leave all the trash in the taxi, and nobody knew she was eating. You know, okay, we put a stop to that, but I still think that's kind of a, oh, my sister was, she was sharp in her own way. Yep. So, but she kept flying into rages, so they gave her antidepressants, and she calmed down. She got skinny again and stayed skinny. She smiled. She laughed. The average life expectancy today for a person with prader willi syndrome is 30, and she made it to 58. I was hoping she'd make it to 60. But the congestive heart failure, and, or heart syndrome, and the uh, respiratory failure took her down. We had been hoping that it wouldn't happen for a while, but there it was. And so Paula lived, loved her long-term about 15-year housemate Stephanie, who uh, also had prader willi syndrome. She loved her cats, Bootsy, Mousy, and Rue for kangaroo. She loved her family, most days. She loved her co-workers at, at ARC. And this I didn't know until I got back there, but she was on some sort of human rights commission in central Ohio advocating for people with disabilities. And then these other advocates came and said, oh, Paula was relentless. She was the one who was at, oh, she was out there. Any disability, she was advocating for you. Now, I tell you all this because on the Friday night visitation and before and after the Saturday funeral and a, and a few other times, but really a lot there at the visitation, people came up to me and my family and said, Keith, Paula was nothing but joy. She was joyful. She walked into a room and the whole place would light up. And they used that word, joy, over and over again. And you know, every now and then I think you get tired of saying joyfully ever after, but, I, but I'm listening to these people and I'm saying, I got to get back to Milalani and tell everybody, see, see, I'm not making this up. She lived joyfully. And she lived with what I define joy as, 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 as life and love and creativity. Laughter is in there too, right? Which, well, she lived her baptismal birthday every day, the joy. Which is why I say during the prayers uh, at the baptismal anniversaries and, and birthdays, I say, may their day be full of laughter, life, love, sometimes joy I throw in there. So when I came home, I had to dig out a short article by a, a fantastic Christian thinker from the last half of the 1900s, and right, he's still alive, and he's been writing for a few years now, a fellow named Jürgen Moltmann, who wrote a book called The Theology of Hope After the Devastation of Germany, where he lived, and who wrote about the crucified God as the heart and center of our faith, the cross. But this article I had to dig out 
I actually found it on Twitter, of all places, unpublished. It was called Christianity, a religion of joy. Joy. And his question was, how is our life resonating with the joy of God? How is our life resonating, being touched by God's joy? And he says there are two movements in this, in this resonance of joy. First, God turns to us, as in Isaiah. God comes looking for us. God says, call me daddy. God says, wait for it. Wait for it. Let's not do the sorting too fast. You don't know which one is the wheat and which one is the darnell. Wait for it. That's the overriding movement. And only in response to that movement, only in response to Christ's cross, does the Spirit create faith in us and we turn to the God who is rejoicing at having found us. And what do we do? We celebrate. We sing. Maybe we dance. Oh, wait, this is a Lutheran church. Okay. But others do. We praise. We rejoice. And what we really do well is feast. We eat stuff. Here, out there, and everywhere in between. Communion, Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, whatever you call it, is our ritual feast of life, which Moltmann says is at the heart of every great religion. You have a feast of life, a feast of joy. And we demonstrate our joy. We love God. We try to like our neighbors, too, most days. And that is how we live our Christian faith. That is how we resonate with the joy of God. A couple snippets from Moltmann. The final judgment is a day of rejoicing, not terror. The sorting will be a day of rejoicing. In truth, religion is the feast of life. Totally useless what we're doing here, but joyful. Faith is living in the Christian feast. Faith is eating, washing up, talking story, and eating. And behind it all, behind the cross of Christ that is bumping into us when I wave my hands, the central symbol of our faith, behind the cross is the Easter resurrection, shining the sun's light on it. And so, the secret, he says, the secret of life, and resonance with God is love. Love poured out through the Spirit to us and back to God, among us and back to God. And so repentance means not feeling badly about stuff, but joining in the joy of God. There is my grief. And for every funeral, and it worked with the pastor who did the I did not do my sister's funeral. I have a rule. You don't do that. He did what I like to do, or try to do. Create space for grief and bracket it with hope. There's the cross. Here's the resurrection. Bracketed by resurrection hope. Final story. As we were sitting with Pastor Jonathan, planning the service, I said, well, I, you know, I don't normally do communion at a, at a church service. We, you know, we don't, there's we're so many people from so many different faith perspectives that it might be awkward. And my, my other little sister, Beverly, goes, oh, whoa, 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 little sister. Paula liked communion most of all. I said, well, of course, she got bread and wine. She got to eat. Beverly goes, yeah. Yeah, so we're having communion. I said, fine, that's, oh, it was fine. And then it went well, right? The feast of life 
for my joy-filled sister Paula. And you know what else Beverly added? You know what I'm seeing where Paula is right now? Where? In heaven. At the divine all-you-can-eat buffet. And in heaven, she's not even adding one ounce of fat to her body. And I said, I think I know a lot of people who would really like that, including me. So here's to Paula, who loved life to the fullest, and for whom we can say together at the end of the story, she lived joyfully ever after. May we all live as joyfully as Paula. Amen. And the hymn of the day is Blessed Assurance. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing. Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and life everlasting. Amen. Oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth, both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit, bearing witness amongst us. E ka haku. E lo amai. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policymakers to protect lands and seas, bring rain to sun-parched fields, and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. E ka haku. E aloha mai. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters, and teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. E ka haku. E aloha mai. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction, especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we now speak aloud. For the families of Brian, Mike, and Paula, for Alice, Anita, Christina, Dick, Ian, Jerry, Kathy, Lahela, Mary, Michael, Hattie, Peggy, Richard, Star, and Yvonne. Sustain your people living with HIV AIDS, provide shelter for all who are unhoused, and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. E ka haku. E aloamai. You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all. Our education ministry to equip us for faithful living and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. E ka haku. E aloamai. We remember those with birthdays this week, especially Sam, Paul, Connie, Janet, and Fia. All those who are celebrating baptismal anniversaries, especially Eileen, may their day be filled with laughter, life, and joy. Aloha ma. We remember the community of saints on Maui, known as Kihei Lutheran Church, and their interim pastor, as their next steps. We pray that your spirit would guide them into life full of joy. E ka haku. E aloha mai. You send faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed, especially Brian, Mike, Paula, and Brigitta of Sweden, whom the church commemorates today, so that we live into that same hope. E ka haku. E aloha mai. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who, was, who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Aloha nui, e oko, o ke aloha, o ka haku e maoana meiko, a paoloa. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can wave to and whom you can hug. And you may be seated. I looked away. I didn't know if the piece was over or not. Yeah, okay. Pretty much done. Okay. Thank you again uh, for your support here, of your time, your talent, and your tithes uh, for our ministry here at Christ Lutheran Church. Uh, we're doing okay, and I am hopeful. So, thank you again.
Tom, would you please uh, lead us in uh, the offering song? these gifts of your creation and multiply your generousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Namakana Akeakua, Nokapoe Akeakua, the gifts of God for the people of God. E como mai, e keeper mai. Come, all is ready, and you are welcome.
Greetings. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, if at this time you have bread and wine at hand or something reasonably close, I invite you to take it up now and join us in this feast of life where we say the body of Christ is broken for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Announcements. Um, there's, whoops. Is that me? Okay. It's always something. Uh, the lawn guys on Saturday morning are uh, needing a little help. Uh, uh, you are of a mind to come help uh, rake some leaves and clean up the parking lot a little. Uh, they would be uh, very grateful uh, for some help uh, from time to time. And uh, then also, I don't know if you got uh, my, I think it was an email, and I put it up on a lot of the social media that uh, there was a fake text message sent uh, asking for uh, an urgent favor because I was in the meeting. If you ever hear those words, urgent, favor, and meeting, it's not I, okay? Because that's sort of a standard language for scammers and fishers. And, um, and I will never ask you for money via text uh, or email. I will always request cold, hard cash up front, right in person, all right? So, but I will not ever ask for gift cards or a credit card number or anything like that uh, uh, via uh, social media or texting. Um, and just in case, no, I was joking about the cold, hard cash. I better be careful. All right. Uh, and then... Um, there was another one not written down, but I can't remember what it is. You can look at some of these yourself, but I do want to emphasize that the IHS is coming up in a couple of Saturdays, right? So, August 5th. yeah, August fifth. Okay, all right. And uh, uh, then the contribu quarterly contribution statements uh, are on. Uh, they're in a little box there on the table, and you can find yours as, as you uh, uh, exit at the end of the service. I think that's it. I do want to say thank you to Pastors AJ and uh, Dale and Art, and thank Tom for filling in, too. Um, uh, while I was gone, uh, they, they really jumped to it, and, and I'm grateful. And uh, it's always good to get a second and third opinion anyways, isn't it? So, OK. Please stand then for the benediction and the sending song. Now go with God behind and before you, with Christ's cross on your forehead and the gentle breath of the Spirit to keep you in faith. Amen. And we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow in English and then Hawaiian.
thanks be to God.